Alright now, so let's calculate how many ATPs that we are going to get from oxidation of a specific fatty acid. So let's take a most common fatty acid that we have in our body, we synthesize in our body and that is palmitate or palmitic acid. So the palmitate or palmitic acid is a 16 carbon fatty acid. So that is palmitate here. So palmitate is a 16 carbon fatty acid. Now the palmitate to in order to get into a beta oxidation. So we really need to activate palmitate into palmitoyl CoA. As I already told you any fatty acid that has to get into a reaction it has to be in its active form. So let's activate palmitate into palmitoyl CoA. So palmitate converting into palmitoyl CoA. So that means we are this particular reaction uses ATP and release AMP that is adenosine monophosphate plus PPI inorganic pyrophosphate. This job it will be done by acyl CoA synthetase enzyme or palmitoyl CoA synthetase enzyme and this particular enzyme consumes two equivalent ATPs. That's important. We need to remember there will be consumption of two ATPs here. So once palmitoyl CoA is active, so it can get into mitochondrial matrix and that is through Connetin transport mechanism and I have a video on Connetin shuttle mechanism. You can watch that video in the uh, as in the link appearing in the right upper corner and also it is there in the description below. Now palmitoyl CoA gets into all these four reactions as I already explained to you and at the end you get a specific fatty acid with two carbon less than palmitoyl CoA and that is you are going to get 14 carbon here and two carbons will be released as acetyl CoA molecule. Now this 14 carbon molecule it will get back into the first reaction. So this process will go on and on until you have four carbons left and then finally it will get into the last spiral of reaction and give you acetyl CoA and in each spiral as we have already seen you are going to get FADH2 and NADH plus H plus molecule. Now let us calculate how many ATPs we get from palmitoyl CoA which has got a 16 carbon. So all you need to do is, so it is very simple, so you really need to know the number of carbons. So number of carbons here is 16 and divide that number by 2, 2 so it means you got 8, number 8 there. It means you get 8 acetyl CoA from a 16 carbon palmitoyl CoA. So 16 carbon palmitoyl CoA will be oxidized into 8 acetyl CoA molecules. So once you get 8 acetyl CoA here, so you know the number of ATPs that you get from each acetyl CoA molecule. So each acetyl CoA will give you 10 ATPs. So each acetyl CoA will give you 10 ATPs. So that means 10 multiplied by 8 that means you get 80 ATPs here. 80 ATPs you get from 8 acetyl CoA molecules. How did you get that? 16 divided by 2. Why 2? Because each acetyl CoA is a 2 carbon. So dividing 16 carbon divided by 2 there 2 carbon. It means you got 8 acetyl CoA and 8 acetyl, each acetyl CoA give you 10 ATPs that means 8 multiplied by 10 you got 80 ATPs. Now don't forget to add ATP is coming from NADH and FADH2 because each spiral of beta oxidation you get 1 NADH and 1 FADH so that means total you get 4 ATPs here. FADH give you 1.5 ATPs, NADH give you 2.5 ATPs that means you got 4 ATPs in each spiral. So then it means you really need to calculate how many spirals it takes for palmitate ultimately to give 8 acetyl CoA molecules and that is very simple. So once you calculate 8 acetyl CoA is there in 16 divided by 2 you got 8 and take that 8 number 8 subtract number 1 there so you get 7. So this is it means it has 7 spirals. So palmitate has to undergo 7 spirals to release 8 acetyl CoA molecules and in each spiral you get 4 ATPs that means you will get you have 7 spirals and 4 ATPs you get, so that means you get 28 ATPs. So in spiral itself we got 28 ATPs 
So all we need to do now is add 80 and 28 there. So we have 80 coming from acetyl CoA molecules and we have 28 ATPs coming from each spiral. So means uh, uh, coming from all the seven spirals. So we, we have 108 ATPs here. So once you got 108, so don't forget to subtract two ATPs that we have consumed to activate palmitate into palmitile CoA. So take those two out here. So I'm taking two out from this number. So overall I got 106 ATPs. So this is the net number of ATPs that we get from palmitile CoA oxidation into 8 acetyl CoA is using 7 spirals. So that's the number here. This is 106 ATPs from palmitate. Now suppose if the fatty acid is stearyl CoA or stearate which is activated into stearyl CoA. Stearyl CoA is a 18 carbon fatty acid. Now all you need to do is 16 carbon fatty acid you are getting 106 ATPs for 18 carbon fatty acid. We just need to add one more spiral to it and one more acetyl CoA because 16 and 18 difference is 2 and that means one acetyl CoA additionally you are going to get and to get that one additional acetyl CoA you really need to run one more spiral that means this one more spiral like this will go on that means you get 4 ATPs here and one acetyl CoA here so 4 ATPs from FADH and NADH acetyl CoA give you 10 ATPs so total you get 14 ATPs additionally because you are adding one more spiral there to oxidize 18 carbon stearyl CoA. So all you need to do is just add 14 to this 106 number. So that will be 120 ATPs from 18 carbon fatty acid. If your fatty acid is 14 carbon, all you need to do is take out 14 from 106. So like this by addition or subtraction, so you can get your number simply by knowing 106 is the net ATPs that you get from palmitile CoA. Okay? So this is how you can do ATP calculation from beta oxidation. I hope this video has helped you to understand this 